Aloha! Hey, it's Julie Zemelis from 365 Kona, and I am here with Lance Owens, the president of the West Hawaii Association of Realtors and also of Luba Real Estate for the Big Island Real Estate Minute. And we're coming to you live from a Kona coffee farm, which we thought was pretty cool as our background. So um, today we're going to talk about condos. So I get a lot of questions from people who want to come to the Big Island and buy a property and they look at the prices sometimes of what's happening in West Hawaii and sometimes they say hey if I can't buy a single family home what about buying a condo so I'm gonna ask Lance some of the questions that I get a lot from my readers so one of the first ones is Lance can you tell us a little bit about the homeowners association fees um, that people have to um, contend with when they're looking at the price of a condo when they're buying it so, typically when you look at the properties here in Hawaii, it's going to all be lumped together. It's going to, they're going to kind of come under the um, under the uh, description of maintenance fees. So that's going to be your homeowners association fees, your AOAO fees, which is um, Association of Apartment Owners. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to it's going to take care of, basically a lot of people don't realize, you know, you, it covers your building insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big, a big part of what it covers. So you don't have to go get building insurance like if you owned a home. Right. So when you talk about an average HOA fee of $500, you got to remember that uh, it, it's going to cover the, 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 um, the insurance, it's going to cover the water, mm -hmm. it's going to co cover the sewage, it's going to cover the um, the trash fees, and a lot of people don't realize trash is extra here in Kona. It's not something that the city and county pays for. So, uh, but it's going to cover those items. Right. And uh, some of the other things are the differences from what side of the street you're living on. Mm -hmm. And if you're on the Mackay side of the street and in the ocean side, if you're on that side of the street, you get a lot more wear and tear on the buildings at ocean water. Just not from from waves crashing into the buildings, but just from the salt air. And what's happening to it? It's doing right. a lot. It's amazing just being on the other side of the street. How much less damage is done? On and some people might not know, coming from the mainland, that um, ocean air is actually very corrosive. So not only does it affect the buildings, but it also affects appliances, your car, a lot of different things. Right? Yeah, yeah. You, if you're on that ocean side of the street, you're going to be replacing your electronics a lot more. Mm -hmm. than you so that's something good to know that, you know, when you get here, that ask people how long do their appliances last, and you'll notice that people live within maybe a quarter mile of the mm -hmm. ocean mm -hmm. are replacing a lot of that stuff a lot quicker, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I've been in places where I've actually seen just the half of the fan on the roof that is on the side facing the ocean is the one with rust on it. Mm -hmm. And the other side that's on the leeward side of it is, is not. Right. Pretty... And then with that also, um, how old a building is probably affects the cost of an HOA fee as well, right? It does. And when we went through these building phases here in Kona in the 70s and the 80s and of course in the 90s and then, and then probably in the mid to like 2004, 2005, 2006. So you get into these buildings that were built in the 70s and 80s, you're looking at, uh, they've got to have a reserve in, in there to cover things for a new roof and for painting and mm -hmm. uh, pipes that are aging, things like that. So Hawaii's done a really good job of making these, uh, these, these complexes accountable for, for uh, the future so that we don't get hit. You know, ten, 10 years ago, you saw a lot of complexes get hit with uh, big assessment fees. Uh, one of them was Keho Resort, and they had to replace all the lanai's, and I think they had to do some roofs and mm -hmm. things like that, and they hadn't been saving up for it. So some of these places, you'll see they have uh, assessments or they have a high maintenance fee that may only be for a few more years. Mm -hmm. and they'll come down, but don't count on going down too much. And so um, one of the things that when people are thinking about buying a condo, they probably need to look at the reserves for, and also because of the lender probably wants to know some of this information as well, correct? Correct. And it, one of the big things, a lot of people don't realize this, but part of the contract, the purchase contract, what it does is there's a section in there where the uh, seller has to provide those to you. And it's typically written in a 14-day period. So, so the seller has 14 days to bring you the latest on the reserves and uh, you know, anything, insurance summaries and how many homeowners are delinquent and uh, big things that's important, we'll get into this in another segment, is is uh, owner-occupant versus oh, yeah. uh, that, so we'll get into that in another segment. Okay. Um, one of the things, too, that I've been asked is um, when you're looking on the multiple listing service to buy a home here, uh, some people are wondering why is it so hard to find what the HOA fees are for the condos? So that has a lot to do with the third party. Yeah. So a lot of people are looking on Zillow and they're looking in places that uh, they're pulling it in from 500 different MLSs across the country. Mm -hmm. So they don't, they're not compatible with everybody. So what happens is uh, 
you're really better off to look. If you're looking at for property in the Big Island, you want to look at something that's directly uh, connected to the Big Island uh, real estate MLS. Because it's very clear in financial detail. So you'll so look for a tab. The, um, what's the website on that? Uh, Hawaii Information Service is the is actually that's our site. So Hawaii Living. Hawaiiliving.com? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so not Zillow, but Hawaiiliving.com. Yeah, and then we'll correct that in the remarks if I'm wrong on that because I don't go to the public site very often. Yeah, so okay. sorry, but my site's Hawaii Information Service. And uh, that has it's spelled out everything. You know, some of our things too with laws, a lot of people don't understand. They're looking and they find a condo for $120,000 in Kailo Kona. And they're like, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. And it's because it's leasehold. And again, leasehold versus fee simple. Be a whole nother segment we can talk about this on. But it's important that if you see LS, or FS on it. Mm -hmm. uh, FS meaning fee simple, meaning your condo complex uh, actually holds title to the land. Right. So therefore, you basically yeah. own it. You own whereas it, yeah. leasehold, basically, you're you're just like you're just there for a while. You don't own the land itself. And we'll right. we have more of these uh, links on our website. So um, we're going to wrap this segment up right now, and we're going to do a little bit more in depth condos in the future. But for right now, thank you very much, Lance, thank you. for being part thank of you, our Kayla. real estate minute. All right. Thanks, guys.